Hello, welcome to uh, my Deuze vlog, uh, an online sort of irregular uh, record of uh, interviews, uh, conversations I've had the privilege to record with media scholars and professionals from around the world. And, and today uh, I'm so pleased that you're joining me to have a conversation with uh, Seri and his friends and colleagues at Guara Media. Guara Media is a digital uh, media production company operating out of Kharkiv, Ukraine. And um, uh, exactly a year ago, uh, in, in April uh, 2022, I recorded, I had a chance to record an, an interview uh, with Seri and some of his colleagues uh, while they're being shot at uh, by um, um, the Russian troops uh, closing in, uh, in in their oblast, in their region. And now we are a year later. Uh, uh, at the moment, um, uh, their part of uh, Ukraine is is um, uh, liberated, although there's always the constant threat of rocket strikes or perhaps even a new uh, attack by Russian uh, ground forces. But in the meantime, Seri and his friends have built out their company uh, um, in the context of war to a fully fledged uh, uh, media and creative and news organization providing incredibly important reporting on the ground from that region and not just um, uh, in, uh, for the Ukrainian people but very much also uh, for an international audience getting an international editor on board and, and, and producing stories, documentaries, um, um, uh, snippets of news fact-checking services for an international community. Um, as always, talking with these young men and women is, is profoundly inspiring and uh, <clears throat> And I hope uh, you'll join me uh, uh, in, in listening to them. And if you feel like it, uh, please uh, find a way to check their, their work out and perhaps even support them through their Patreon. Uh, buy them a coffee. Um, thanks so much for all, all, all of you for joining me a, a year later after we met uh, online uh, talking about Guara Media and in Kharkiv trying to survive both, you know, you of course personally and well as a media company in the context of the Russian invasion. Um, a year has passed. Um, Guara has undergone, undergone profound transformation that we're going to talk about, of course, but First, I would love to hear from all, all of you sort of just some thoughts about how this year has been, how you look back. Uh, um, and also when you now look back at that that video interview we did a year ago, uh, how, you, how you think back about that time and, 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 and where you are now. Uh, Seri, maybe I can ask you to kick us off. Um, yeah. Um... Uh, hello, uh, great to see you again and uh, talk about this. Uh, so really just a hour ago uh, and uh, several hours before this conversation, conversation, I was watching our previous video and uh, we um, previously talked in uh, April 2022. It was horrible time because uh, uh, we were in Kharkiv and in Ukraine. I remember Kharkiv was uh, under attempts of Russian forces to be encircled and uh, captured uh, and um, uh, we were in this uh, city and uh, it was very unclear moment at the time what will happen with us uh, uh, next uh, when i'm now thinking what could happen and we, uh, when i talk with people i know from torture rooms or uh, that we were um, that felt some horrible circumstances circumstances in their life i was thinking that really we might be in uh, some filtration camps or maybe by russians or uh, kind of in uh, torture rooms uh, and because when i was uh, reading uh, experience of the Kherson, yeah it's a city in the south of ukraine with uh, uh, like is it uh, it's oblast uh, center like yeah administrative center of uh, some districts in the country and Kharkiv is like that it might be the same because it's horrible and uh, hopefully it's uh, went uh, more or less well 
Uh, and uh, it was the first phase uh, of the war for me. It's uncertainty and disruption. And uh, we were working at the time. Uh, I personally was working from the basement in the city center of our colleagues. Uh, uh, and um, it was the first phase. In that time, we, we were mostly focused on survival. And uh, this is when the transformation started for our organization. The second phase for me and us was the, from May to September until the Ukrainian counteroffensive started. Uh, in the time, Russia was stopped nearby the city, and uh, we started our activities uh, more broad. Uh, we were focusing on local reporting, creating photo reportage, uh, fact check. And also in that period, we launched the uh, English version, and when the Tanya uh, uh join it to us as uh, english editor of, of our english version and in that time we were um thinking on the, the model we will be working on we also launched local news because uh, we understood that uh, when you live under uh, danger of uh, life and uh, when rockets are flying uh, all over the city it's hard to report only about culture or some future or creative stuff because it's all about survival. And uh, we also saw decline in international reporters working in our region and uh, thought that the English version would help uh, people to understand uh, what's happening in our area. And um, also at the time, we uh, were doing local reports, uh, we were local stories, and uh, we were focusing on organization transformation, development, uh, strengthening our processes, uh, strengthening our skills in all these circumstances that are not normal. Uh, the third phase was the uh, was the autumn uh, in, from September to uh, December 2022. This is when Ukrainian counteroffensive started in Kharkiv region. It was super fast, super uh, intensive. Uh, huge territories was developed because um, it's not kind of propaganda stuff, but really when we met uh, how Russian forces are standing on these occupied territories, it's looking like uh, nonsense. They are always dirty, uh, trash is everywhere. And it seems like when they stand on one place for a long time, they kind of started to, de to, to degrade, like to degradate, to destroy. Uh, themselves because uh, uh, what we saw was horrible and um, it seems like it was one of the tactic to exhaust them and they counteroffensive started to kick them out from Kharkiv Oblast and um, and it started from our regions and uh, when we visited these places just after counteroffensive horrible things started to appear uh, this is the torture rooms uh, where people were tortured in Izum district, uh, for example. And I'm from Izum, my parents were there, hopefully they are alive. But stories that people are speaking there, it's horrible. And the mass grave with nearby uh, 1,000 people, 40, uh, 40, 47, it seems like uh, in the end it was uh, found there. Uh, it's but it's only one place, and there's much more people. Four hundred, who... five, four hundred, yeah, four hundred and forty-seven, yeah. Yeah, four hundred forty-seven, yeah. and uh, the story that these people started to tell uh, how they were suffering during this time uh, were uh, like unexpected and unknown experience for us, because uh, uh, we could not understand believe that in our peaceful lives it would happen, and uh, it uh, took from us a huge. A time of work uh, and uh, we trying to do photos reports uh, video stories uh, and that time we started to be involved in some um, fixation of war crimes we work uh, with uh, one of archives and we send contacts of people uh, to the defenders human rights defenders uh, of different uh, organizations sao oblast and uh, national one uh, as uh, it's uh, something that can speed up them and uh, we started to understand that we need to help these people somehow, but we can't because kind of he doesn't have these resources and focus and operational perspective. But we at least try to connect them on our peer-to-peer -peer communication with this organization as journalists and that organization. And then it was also during this phase huge blackouts because uh, Russian forces were attacking uh, cities in Ukraine by rockets it was wave of rockets then a wave of some iranians drones 
they fly it over the cities. It was the days when uh, 80 or uh, 100 of rocket flying for over from Russia and Belarus over Ukraine and shooting to the electricity stations and, of course, to civil um, buildings, and they were destroying and killing people. And it was huge blackout, and it was another uh, disruption, like that we were trying to, I don't know, buy some generators, gas, uh, like uh, come, uh, come, like charging points, whatever. And it was a piece of work. Um, I'm super annoyed by all this stuff, but in the end, I'm expert in all the generators. I can explain you the difference. Like, so if you need advice, you can write me to the email. I will be happy to share this uh, knowledge how these generators work, gas, benzene, and so on. Um, and it's also like takes time and uh, resources and the brains, like the how to fix it. Uh, and this was the last phase, uh, and uh, now we are focusing in, in new year 2023. Um, we passed through possible Russian uh, kind of offensive, uh, and um, now we are into just yesterday. We, uh, I would say, ended our uh, uh, transformation because just recently we. I changed the final digital platforms uh, and website uh, from identity sites. We will, of course, we of course have several more ideas, and it will be several iterations. But just really yesterday, we finished uh, rebranding uh, through the web and through the digital platform because we had to change uh, visual communication to uh, expand it for our readers, as we really got uh, to be another organization from organizational perspective, from strategy perspective, and from um, maybe audience perspective also. So that's how it was. Thanks, I, and it's a, a truly uh, incredible story, of course, both personally as well as the keeping things going under these circumstances. And Olena, can I ask you also to 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 contribute a little bit about your experiences of this time and also looking back at the interview. I think a year ago you were calling in from Kiev, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's because my my. So I live in Kiev. So yeah, uh, I visited Kharkiv. Uh, I've just recalled it was January, so it was uh, wow. so his second phase of, uh, of of the year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll try to be maybe a bit more concise and just sum up. Uh, yeah, so uh, just content-wise, I would say that this first stage from uh, obviously March to let's say autumn or um, the onset of the the onset of of winter, uh, it was really unclear what to do next because we ceased to operate as a as an outlet that covers culture. Uh, as Sir he said, uh, we just felt it's completely irrelevant to you know to operate like this and we had already launched the fact checking bot that we are developing and working on now uh, as well uh, so we had this project uh, if i'm not mistaken at that time it was uh, um, so we were volunteering it was uh, just a volunteer in the initiative uh, a, a, a couple of months later, uh, we managed to find to find uh, resources for uh, for this project in particular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, so we had this uh, you know uh, habit of working as as a cultural uh, cultural online magazine. Uh, but we uh, at, the, at, the, at that time we started to uh, to change, but it was still unclear what to do. Uh, uh, you know, what things uh, are we going to to emphasize to to put in focus? Yeah, and then we realized that uh, well, okay, we'll be covering war, uh, so we started to transform. Um, and we started becoming uh, just a, a major uh, local outlet that, well, obviously for that reason, our, for example, competitors and, and the list <clears throat> of our competitors has changed. Uh, yeah, and just a couple of months ago, we had our first strategic session where we, we as well, uh, we tried to sum up the, the whole year. 
and we realized we had this revelation that uh, we are a completely different organization, both in terms of uh, the team, because we we, we have expanded uh, to 22 people, mm -hmm. team members, and in terms of uh, in terms of our our values, our policies, you know, just topics that we are going to uh, uh, to introduce and to cover. Yeah, so uh, that was a the, the whole year was a sort of transitory state, uh, and we made made it through you know through this year. Uh, we started you know we ceased to exist as a as a as a, as a cultural online magazine. Um, and we became uh, a local major uh, outlet that, that covers, you know, everything that uh, that is important uh, and relevant for for you know, for people that live uh, just in Kharkiv or uh, the Kharkiv region. Yeah, so that's the main the main uh, dramatic change. Yeah, and it's it's a story of incredible transformation. Also, like that you have this meeting, and then you all of a sudden realize that. You know, not only have you survived this phase, but you sort of adopted an entire new professional identity in the process and expanded, uh, whereas yeah. so many other outlets would have shut down. Or, or so that's 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 really incredible. And and I guess Tatiana, if I may ask, that's kind of where you come in as well, because not only is Guara, of course, in a local medium and covering the war and covering local culture and ha as it adapts and 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 also tries to come up with a new kind of idea of, of the future it there's also this international component uh to Guara media and 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 uh, can you tell a little, little bit how you got involved and what your role in is and 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 how you sort of migrate uh from living in different countries and then coming back to Ukraine yeah sure thanks for having me here obviously I can't refer to your conversation one year ago because I wasn't a part of Guara team that time I joined in September and the end of September but I think I have also passed uh, some personal and uh, English version uh, of the media stages during this time because uh, at the beginning uh, I joined uh, before the uh, Ukrainian counteroffensive in Kharkiv Oblast and uh, all this news and all this danger uh, and everything going on we tried to cover as many news as we could so basically my work uh, was focused on a news feed and uh, during several months uh, all these attacks on the electricity supply system uh, it was a bit chaotic and only recently i think we've managed to think about strategy and about some balance uh, because uh, we also focus on uh, long reads interviews and maybe some explainers uh, because you know when uh, you try to think about types of content uh, you want to produce and you ask your audience like what you want to read or what uh, questions you have we realized that uh, Mm, people don't know about Kharkiv much and sadly Kharkiv has become famous in Ukraine um, because of war and uh, it's our task to tell people more about us, about Kharkiv, about Kharkiv Oblast and now of course we need to cover all the war crimes and all the horrible situations people have here and all the events but also we try to find a balance and talk about future talk about perspective and talk a bit more about the beautiful things we have because uh, my dream is that after our victory Kharkiv name won't disappear from like global media context, but uh, will be discussed in the terms of uh, culture, events, international politics, uh, education, whatever. But now we struggle to, again, this word balance, yeah, I, I mentioned it a lot because yeah, it's our main focus to talk about uh, 
what's going on. And we see that uh, people are interested in uh, our fact-checking part of, uh, of content and because the Russian propaganda, unfortunately, uh, reaches uh, English-speaking world too. And uh, mm. our fact-checkers bank a lot of fakes and uh, translate it into English. And I see that it draws attention. And uh, also, uh, we cover some stories of local artists, uh, of uh, local entrepreneurs. Oh, many of them now obviously help our army, yeah, volunteer. So kind of integrate yeah, everything and uh, um, cover the whole picture. And also we have uh, interviews with the foreigners who come to Kharkiv. Some of them live in Kharkiv, some of them volunteer, some of them just visit Kharkiv as uh, human rights defenders. And I think that's a great idea to build this bridge, you know, between the international community and the local community and to show uh, our city uh, through the eyes of uh, people who come from other countries. So halfway through the interview, we got interrupted. But uh, as we picked up again, we are uh, in the middle of Seri explaining the evolution of Guara Media during the Russian invasion, during a year of war in Ukraine, uh, transitioning from a digital marketing agency, promoting cultural life and industries in and around Kharkiv and in the region, to becoming a full-fledged media company, a local news company, and uh, a network of um, a war correspondents, both reporting on the local consequences of the war, as well as supporting international media journalists coming to the region to report on what is happening. And what is important to appreciate as we pick up Seri's uh, explanation of what Guara Media today is all about in its coverage, in its creative studio, in the running of a ca coffee shop in downtown Kharkiv is that all of this was taking place to a large extent, at least until uh, the winter months uh, um, of last year, um, um, of 2022, uh, under partial Russian occupation and daily bombardments of the city. Uh, only after the, the liberation of the region by the uh, Ukrainian counter-offensive, life returned to somewhat normal, although normal is the bad term, in this context and as we were talking during this interview um, uh, Seri and his friends were very much talking about a new threat of uh, Russian attacks uh, looming on the horizon so we're picking up uh, on Seri's explanation of the kind of stories and products and initiatives Gora Media is putting out today and regarding the organizational development in general and its strategy that uh, we spend a lot of resources, we just burn out them on the reporting. Here, like we do some videos, we do stories, uh, we do some uh, stories from the occupation territory. This is a cat in burnout uh, um, uh, apartment, or this is the uh, stuff from some school from occupied territory where the kids were studied before, uh, or some uh, mass events. Uh, and this is the balance we should uh, have this reporting between that and between and other stuff uh, uh, so important uh, part of organization still playing fact check and we started very slowly expanded to the english version uh, and uh, um, we did this uh, and we see that sometimes it's go goes forward and we use reddit a lot to distribute our content since reddit uh, subreddits for uh, um, joining to the discussion uh, into our um, content. Uh, uh, previous year, we also started to do first investigations. It's mostly we are related to the uh, synth uh, activities uh, and the triggers for this was not uh, kind of our need, but it was uh, uh, just because uh, we found documents of soldiers, yeah, like kind of what to do with that. Yeah, like uh, uh, let's discuss it and find who they are, because what if they are uh, related to this mass grave in the, this city, for example, yeah, and uh, 
this mostly was the triggers for uh, this uh, activities. Uh, and uh, maybe Oliana would comment this, but uh, uh, one of the most interesting part for us that we are kind of, we did not see such journals that are we are growing from a cultural perspective. <laughs> who are the members of the Eurozine <laughs> big uh, network of uh, cultural journals? <laughs> Who are having for check departments strong like that and in march just previous months we uh, got validated uh, as uh, for checkers uh, transparent and not uh, partisan and uh, not uh, maybe uh, that does not take neutral not uh, biased yeah not biased and uh, we um, pass it the efcn validation we wait for them like letters and all the process to establish that and we gonna our dream, my dream personal, maybe, and department uh, is to join uh, to the fact checking of the Facebook because there is a lot of information is flowed in uh, there and it's important platform we can join and monetize uh, our work. Uh, and we plan and hope to access this uh, uh, fact checking business model to strengthen our team. Uh, and uh, we renovated our membership, our membership with readers. Uh, it's uh, not uh, so much a thousand of people. Yeah, it's uh, up to 100 of the users who donate us monthly. And um, but we had to manage this. Yeah, like enable your should run to the occupied territory uh, and tell story. But you also need to explain readers this value. So we develop membership and we uh, put a uh, core focus on this and we will uh, do this focus uh, but uh, in ukraine is now it's in my opinion hard because all the time when i'm asking for donate to media i'm thinking oh my god i'm taking money from armed forces of ukraine instead of donation to them people are, should donate to us i don't know i'm not sure i'm so confused so it's uh, hard and uh, we develop Patreon, we develop Buy Me a Coffee. I um, would invite uh, readers uh, of this video to, to join to our Patreon or um, bring to us uh, their coffees and to subscribe to Instagram that we launched just recently, where we uh, tell uh, different stories uh, from the region and experiment with uh, um, like different formats. And for example, just recently we uh, found the story of uh, farmers uh, that are demanding their farms uh, with a very cheap, uh, very creative approach because uh, they need money. They need money to survive and they need resources to survive. And really um, huge territories are mined. People explode all the time. Just uh, previous months, uh, it's uh, uh, like dozens of people in Kharkiv Oblast were uh, exploded. Uh, I met volunteers who lose leg uh, on mine, and uh, he just uh, like like were injured very hardly. Was uh, like it's it's hard to believe. And uh, the farmers need to demand this, and uh, we just uh, uh, society are very pessimistic. It does not see uh, opportunity to went out from this uh, pass. Uh, so that they um, people were watching this video and were inspired. Yes, they started to believe that there is a solution. Because mm -hmm. uh, usually when we talk about uh, he's sitting in the tractor and using drone to or some remote controller to navigate this tractor that is demanding and it, if it's exploding, it's uh, created uh, in such approach so it's not destroyed totally it's just maybe so you have some issues uh, they fix spare parts and continue demanding because uh, uh, public services are unable to do this fast and they say it will take years so people i don't know using drone with night vision using uh, content remote uh, tractors whatever technologies they could imagine to survive and they say we need to start uh, farming because uh, uh, Hundreds of people in our villages are depending on these uh, opportunities, and soil is uh, what give us the food. Uh, so um, that's uh, I said about organization development, about kind of some part of financial stuff, and uh, how how things is going on. And Olena, Olena also want to add something. Oh yeah, <clears throat> I just wanted to add, I don't know if you are familiar with these figures, but I saw figures introduced by the Institute of Mass Information of Ukraine 
few months ago, if I'm not mistaken, uh, stating that up to 75% of Ukrainian uh, outlets, so they uh, they either resorted to staff cuts or just cease to exist. So like a lot of a lot of outlets. Unfortunately, and thanks to Suhi as well, <laughs> we are not one of one of one of them. You know, <laughs> we survived for uh, yeah for a reason, <laughs> and even and even expanded. And and so, and yeah. how, how do um, more I guess more established or traditional um, Ukrainian media organizations or news organizations? How do they respond to? You? To your development and your initiatives i mean uh, is everybody supporting each other or are you becoming like a new competitor or or, or um how, how should we from the outside look at the um both the ukrainian especially the local kharkiv media scene is this a scene where everybody is really coming together uh um, i see that also in in in, in, in your initiatives to promote social change and to bring different people from the creative community together in Kharkiv. Uh, um, how, how would you say that, uh, uh, talk about that, uh, Seri? Yeah, regarding the comp competition, I would not, uh, what I would say, uh, of course, we started to have another competitors, yeah, like, uh, and they are related to the more bigger media or, uh, if to speak about commercial perspective, yeah, like uh, they are, have more resources and they are most, or this is public, uh, Ukrainian public media, so Spilna, we also consider as um, organizations that monitor what they do in the region. So uh, as uh, previously we were working on our stuff, now we investigate uh, what other organizations do and uh, uh, how we can contribute to society on the stories they they do not cover or uh, what they do not see yeah like this is approach i would say that uh, we um, uh, praise uh, uh, regarding some communities development uh, we uh, we launched coffee shop so we have coffee shop in kharkiv uh, um, i will show you because uh, this is media coffee shop it's called coffee media so people okay. come uh, to our place uh, and uh, they uh, uh, drink coffee, communicate with us. It also gives us this is how it looks, and this is oh, our, that's lovely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is our beautiful yard. We also create some photo exhibition about Bakhmut and so on, and we focus on photo reporters, uh, documentary reporters. Uh, so we organize here different events. This is uh, our Daria digital editor, and uh, this is very interesting concept because usually media consider it as something closed. Uh, you should come to press uh, service. You should negotiate uh, and send your press release. Uh, but here we uh, we work upstairs and we sometimes come up down sit down relax uh, speak with people with community exchange uh, stories uh, meet new people and uh, trying to uh, continue our work further and maybe this is a specific we have related to the uh, community stuff and um, i invite all uh, guests to, to our place we will give you a coffee and we will discuss on <laughs> issues of uh, local media and general uh, perspective and uh, with different people organization when come to Kharkiv they visit us uh, sometimes we share our uh, protective uh, jackets uh, with them because uh, some fixers sometimes doesn't have we sharing um, also we uh, will publish a journal offline journal we uh, will do it uh, uh, like after a year, reflection of the year, and we plan, just, as I say, really, we just uh, finalized the transformation just uh, this week, and we, this today, tomorrow, we will have a, a kind of pilot, uh, uh, first uh, pilot uh, journal, yeah, like, or like some two print printouts, and uh, uh, what else I could say is that winter, I, I should uh, highlight also how it was. It was horrible. Uh, we really were suffering without electricity, uh, without internet. Uh, we were afraid. We were under pressure. Uh, it was the times when uh, it was, uh, I know, 80 rockets flying all over Ukraine and hitting Ukrainian electricity stations. Like, yeah, it's how it can be in 2022. It's, uh, uh, like 
40 millions of people uh, were sitting in the basements and hoping that they will have electricity. And we even were trying to organize in our coffee shop something like we called invincibility points. So when electricity was uh, shut down for several days because electricity stations were hit by rockets, we will enable our generator, our Starlinks, uh, our um, like satellite and generators, and we bought batteries. Now we have several batteries, and we have generator, and generator is on gas. I'm an expert in generators now because <laughs> we can survive. It mm -hmm. was horrible, and uh, in the in the end, we are fine, and um, uh, we're ready for the. I, I expect we're ready for the next winter. We does not afraid nothing, and. Uh, uh keep uh, creating stories and reporting local contents uh, despite of any issues with electricity because technologies uh, can help us solve all this uh, semi-genocidal semi-genocide um, ancient stuff so yeah, yeah that's how it goes on um one thing that I remember also from a year ago, and you just mentioned, uh, you know, working as a fixer as well and helping uh, foreign journalists coming in to report. I remember a year ago when we talked about this, uh, you said there were two types of foreign journalists, uh, journalists that are well prepared and they're informed and they're accredited and they've got protective gear and they're respectful. And then there's another group that sort of, yeah, they're a bit opportunistic. They don't have protective gear. They just, you know, they just want to get the war. And and um, um, now a year later, uh, is it still that case? Those two types of journalists, or have journalists, or, or have journalists, foreign journalists, disappeared? Or 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 what would you say? And 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 uh, about the, the 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 foreign reporting and the reporters that you're dealing with uh, today. Yeah, regarding this story, it really was such cases, uh, and uh, uh, now, and uh, you know, like time goes by when you're thinking this, and you are, I understand, so they are sent to some region, they are afraid, maybe they maybe does not have experience in like conflict reporting, or uh, they are limited in uh, fi financial stuff, and I know they sent for three days, uh, I don't know, to do do some report from Ukraine. Uh, and maybe this influenced them, uh, and um, this story will happen. And now, uh, first of all, uh, number of uh, these journalists uh, decreased, but they are still working in the region. And uh, what I see now, this um, and we maybe started to focus like this. That a lot of people started to work on docu documentaries, yeah, like kinda. And um, when news are shifted to the Frontline in Donetsk and Lugansk region, when uh, um, maybe they took a pause uh, waiting for, for the next Ukrainian counteroffensive that we hope will happen because we still have, uh, seems like 17% of uh, nearby, 17% of occupied territories of Ukraine and nearly 1-2% of occupied of our Kharkiv region. And uh, military situation still continue on these uh, borders. Um, Maybe they went and they will come again for for this uh, very soon. And um, we started to, to see more people oriented on long stories, documentaries, investigations, uh, very important part of the work I see here. Cause, and um, some of them are visiting us because uh, it's important to have some local organizations that then can share some information with you, give uh, a focus, uh, and uh, maybe uh, discuss contacts we share contacts whatever people need because uh, uh, it also helps uh, ukraine and us to, um, to to win or defend ourselves uh, and that's how go goes on and uh, uh, regarding the personal perspective uh, uh, i do not uh, strongly involved in all fixing uh, things uh, maybe after half it was only in the first three six months because right. it was super important at the time because nothing was clear and uh, just opportunity to create content uh, would be important uh, and would be helping people to, um, to understand what's happening because it was a mess, it was a chaos, it was very dangerous. And uh, maybe what uh, is the result of this and uh, it's coming to the culture of our organization is uh, all, all uh, people in our organization that work on the streets are having hefat uh, and uh, medical training, somebody 
have uh, two uh, of these trainings because uh, everybody's equipment is this um, it's just in our team in medical kits and uh, uh, we know how to use turkey cat or i don't know help if something happened with you on the street i hope it would not happen but uh, uh, we now aware about this and uh, right uh, like in peaceful time we did not think about it but now it's became tradition in our organization and uh, a very important important piece of uh, work and it's uh, very important and uh, i see that uh, when we started to do this uh, maybe elena would comment on this uh, we felt us more confident and more calm because you know when you does not have the skills or even because i'm not i'm not sure if i'm super expert in this of course but i, I kind of have this certificate and we will study it for several days we uh, were trying on, on actors and uh, trying different stuff with uh, locals experts and international experts and several times so it's important and uh, this uh, maybe where we transform it to from fixing but uh, this experience with uh, international colleagues was super important and also gave us uh, and me uh, gave uh, us uh, some feeling of uh, opportunities a uh, feeling of past to move forward because it's fine yeah maybe elena i i can ask you to pick up on that this notion of moving forward i mean so much has happened uh and and an important part of what I see Guara Media doing and, and investing in, uh, also what Sari was just talking about, about the cafe and bringing people together, is beginning slowly but surely to, to, move, to look towards the future. I mean, uh, can I ask your perspective on this and what, what, what you're doing and, 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 and how you kind of make that work while the, the, th the war is still going on and the threat of, of new attacks is still there on a daily basis? Well, yeah, that's what we are we uh, we've been trying to emphasize as well. I mean, to maintain this focus on on the future, and that's what uh, that's the main difference in the tone of voice. I would say, if you compare Guara to other local uh, local outlets who are older and they are like more traditional, that kind of yeah, so um, that kind of things. I also wanted to add um, regarding the competition, the media competition in Ukraine, that we also have a few organizations in Ukraine, such as the Media um, Development Foundation, who are, uh, so they as well receive money from international funds, mm -hmm. or just partners, donors, and, and then they, uh, they would introduce uh, some sort of training or um, Subgrants to Ukrainian uh, outlets or uh, education programs, uh, and we are uh, under undergoing one of them as well these 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 days. So um, yeah, so there is such a thing as you know uh, this this sort of uh, support that we have on uh, at the national level, uh, but they 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 also. Um, they are hinging on uh, these organizations. They are hinging on external grants as well. Um, and also, I'll, I noticed this thing uh, at the very beginning that those outlets that, uh, let's say, were keen on uh, you know writing grant applications, uh, communicating with international organizations, they managed to survive. Uh, and those that uh, were more traditional or just um, you know, have a lack of capacities, I don't know. Uh, yeah, they, they, they would either, uh, yeah, they, they would experience some issues, of course, because of the crisis and because the uh, advertisement market has just, you know, uh, it's, it's not it's not just decreased, it just died. So yeah. <laughs> that's the, <laughs> the problem. Um, yeah, and you also ask about about the future. Uh, yeah, that's what we're trying to, and it also pertains to this discussion about balance and ma maintaining some sort of balance. You know, also to find this balance. Uh, so so it won't you know feel uh, uh, schizophrenic or something really hectic because it's really hard to. It's a strange state of mind when you see. 
uh, a new story that covers, uh, I know, the most severe uh, torture you can imagine, like really the, the medieval age stuff. Yeah. And then you see the next one coming in your, uh, you know, on your uh, platform, you know, Facebook or something uh, that says, says, well, there are a uh, festival going on or uh, look, here are some photos of, uh, you know, a new restaurant. So it's, it, you know, it's, uh, it's insane. <laughs> like, it's hard to stay sane when you just scroll this, uh, such a news feed. So we are trying to, um, uh, to develop sort of neutral tone of voice. You know, yeah, we we are eager to uh, to investigate uh, war crimes or to do something so that it 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 will become you know it will be able uh, you know other maybe organizations will be able to investigate, uh, but also we are trying to to say that there is such thing as the future. Mm. Um, yeah, and while I I also noticed that um, if we talk about a few competitors that we have here in the region, such as Nakipela or uh, well, so Spilne is a bit. Uh, the, the, this story is different because it's it's because it's a huge national broadcaster. Uh, they just have a lot of offices uh, in different regions, but still, I see that they uh one one thing one thing they they are trying to resort to is. Uh, for example, to they're trying to dwell on Kharkiv's history. They are trying to talk about prominent cultural figures of the past, of the past. And it's a nice approach. That's something that uh, you know uh, that that that, uh, uh, that can show you uh, that there is such thing as a, as a as a as a, as a uh, cultural identity or. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, and it, it it can remind you of that, but but still, uh, I don't see that they uh, I don't see them bringing uh, this sort of you know uh, bright future if just when I scroll you know their their stories, uh, and we decided that that's something uh, we'll try to do. So yeah. I've I realize I've taken up a lot of your time. Um, so maybe we can conclude um with um with with a reflection on I mean when we spoke a year ago, the story that everybody absolutely needed to hear was both your personal story and how you're living through this this experience in this war, as well as the story that needed to be told about what the Russian invasion was actually like, what was actually happening, right? Uh, as you say, I mean, misinformation and debunking uh, uh, fakes was an, an incredibly important part of that, next to simply trying to document what was happening while also being under attack. And we're now a year on. Wara has evolved. You have evolved, for better or worse, right? Become different people in the process. I'm 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 so grateful to to see you all you know alive and 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 well under the circumstances. Um, but so if you now look ahead, is insofar this is possible, because I'm fully aware that the threat of war, the war is still going on, and the threat of new attacks is still there. What do you feel? And Tatiana, you've already spoken about this a little bit. Is the most important story to tell in the next months or in the next year? for Guara and for you personally? What is the story that you absolutely feel should get out, you, you're committed to getting out, that that's going to be your main focus? What should what should not just people in Ukraine, but people in the world really know? And 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 how do you see your role in that? Uh, maybe I, I will start uh, mm. with this conflict. We have uh, existential kind of, because uh, in my opinion, the most important stories is the stories of victim of the war. And the uh, stories of uh, war crimes, torture rooms, uh, with photos, with evidences, uh, with uh, memori memorialization of this knowledge, because uh, um, it should not be allowed. Uh, in other issues, it's, it's already happened. It should be also discussed, but it should not be allowed to continue again, and it should not be um, uh, for forgotten. The first piece of um, uh, discussion that we have now. 
Second piece is uh, I see is that uh, there is some activities, conference of renovations uh, and so forth. It's super important, uh, and uh, but um, uh, I think really balance is important here uh, for how it should be discussed because uh, uh, really war did not end it uh, and it's still going on. And uh, for example, I think um that uh, it might take some time more and the uh, tactics of uh, aggressors is uh, like uh, they trying to take small city by small cities small city by small city and then uh, they might uh, come again to us yeah for example just yesterday russians hit a museum in kupensk a city in kharkiv oblast they hit this museum this historical museum maybe they we are informing correctly, or maybe they just hit this museum with intention, or uh, and the two people who died in this museum is museum workers, uh, and uh, uh, this museum does not exist anymore. Yesterday, we uh, Alex and our producer drive uh, 200 kilometers to make shots uh, of this uh, museum, and this destroyed the stuff. So this discussion about renovation is uh, interesting. Uh, and uh, but should be balanced uh, with uh, ongoing stuff and uh, we now have uh, three pieces of content uh, maybe Olena would elaborate on that and we uh, think uh, maybe uh, last what I would add that uh, discussion we had more is uh, we should tell the stories of soldiers and uh, people who are engaged into defending ourselves and uh, especially women we because we for us it's hard to access to different people's stories because uh, i know on the surface uh men's it's uh, fine because it's a lot of them but we trying to balance and we had the project where we is telling several stories of soldiers and uh, it was six men and we plan to find some women what they do what they how, how they think about the uh, war and what uh, is their profession and how they integrate it into military activities that's what we are discussing it may be free viewers and other it's when i may add uh, this reporters and so on. yeah my first idea my first like automatic answer to your question was that uh it's war crimes that matter the most really uh, uh i would say so i would agree with sahi but I also would add that uh, it's also important to, at some point, to begin to, uh, you know, to, to try to draw a wider picture, so that you know it 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 became more uh, transparent, more clear, like the just the, the size or the you know the uh, the figures, the stats, uh, even from the regional perspective. Mm uh yeah because when people read separate stories uh especially like stories of victims that uh unfortunately if you if you if you do it not that you know uh know that not not that talent uh, talented uh people tend to uh perceive them as something that is hackneyed or tried like banal at it so that's that's a sort of fatigue we uh we've been you know uh noticing since almost the first the, the very first months i guess it's something that uh, people acquire very quickly uh they became tolerant to all these horrible stories you just uh yeah i think it's uh, some sort of uh, defensive mechanism maybe so it's important to uh to look for for new angles but still yeah it's the victims that should be uh you know uh in focus that we should play that that we should place uh like a huge uh emphasis on um yeah that's that's the uh that's this thing uh here and when so he was talking about pieces of content do you do, uh did you did you mean uh like rubrics or project separate projects what did you mean it just uh um what did i mean with with specific no, no, I, I'm, 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 I'm asking yeah okay i'm asking Serhi. so yeah Serhi. uh i i would add uh, that uh, 
Mm, we, we also, I mean, uh, rubric that we decided to focus in uh, okay. quarter mm -hmm. one. Yeah, it's uh, uh, we decided to focus on uh, the stories of people suffering war crimes, it's local uh, stories of people and communities. Um, we also eager to speak about uh, local reports uh, from uh, different um, areas of the oblast, because uh, how these villages is destroyed, or how they are renovated, uh, how they look, what they do, uh, what how people live there. But uh, this is the stories of uh, rural villages, rural areas uh, nearby the city. And the third block uh, of the our discussion it's uh, how local communities, different communities, starting from. Uh, Festival of Classic Arts and uh, fashion photographer or fashion uh, creator that started to create uh, uh, protective vest with heater instead of usual fashion. Yeah, how they are surviving this war and this time and how they are going on. So war crime story, uh, uh, rural reports and stories of the communities was the pillar of uh, of the quarter one of this year and. Uh, now we are discussing another angles of possible expansion with uh, uh, soldiers, with uh, future stories, and how the city will look in future after this war. Right. Yeah. Also, what we are doing these days is we are trying to uh, come back to the liberated territories because a lot of outlets, like a lot of international reporters, they visited them. Uh, you know when when it was uh, uh up to date uh, when it was breaking news uh but if you talk to locals uh they'll say that uh they they, they felt this 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 attention but then it just you know uh, evaporated because uh it's no longer breaking news and they are still try they are still there trying to maintain trying to rebuild their houses trying to you know just uh, restore their lifestyles so it's important to cover them uh, and to to look for these new angles so that you know these these texts won't just repeat each other uh so that's that's because we the that's the reason we are trying to cover you know to focus on innovations for example uh so he mentioned this story it was um a video we uh the video we produced uh a few days ago about uh, local farmers that are trying to demine their uh fields uh with just something that they have in their hands um yeah so that that's that's a sort of new angle uh new uh new perspective uh yeah there are a lot of undercovered areas still and uh what we hear from uh both human rights defenders uh local authorities i know um politicians uh just usual citizens etc is that the the you know the the, the scope of the atrocities and and the, uh, and war crimes is that that huge that it's hard to come up with figures it's hard to uh it's hard to digest these figures uh and it's hard to investigate them it's hard to cover them all because you know uh usually you you, you can have one crime and you'll be investigating it for you know for for a lot of time for years and here you have like thousands i don't know do the hundreds just gazillions of, of crimes that, and and there are uh and they all have you know they, they, they have to be investigated uh although the human resources we have here in ukraine they are not um that huge so it's a problem uh but still it's important to try to draw this wider picture and to just remind of these numbers and this right. scope of atrocities, yeah, yeah, and 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 finally, Tatiana. I mean, earlier on, you already alluded to something that you would like to say uh, as in Guara Media about the future. Uh, um, um, can you t speak a little more more about that? About the the kind of stories that that you hope to be bringing out and that people should know about when we look to the future. Oh, well, uh, in general, I think it's important to focus uh, on, personally for me, it's important to focus on people's stories uh, because I see that uh, many foreign media 
tend to focus on this uh, big picture and you know it becomes a bit abstract like this side and that side and something's going on and i totally understand that uh, it's uh, difficult to involve because you need to stay uh, like to look and based on all these and uh, uh, if you're outside of the situation you can't involve and it's also kind of the defending mechanism of your brain but i believe we that the world's going on and we need to find this capacity to involve emotionally at least when we have some resources and it's easier to uh, to do it through people's stories their personal stories mm, and i think it's our job to tell these stories uh, to ukrainian and to foreign audiences and talking about the future it's more of my dream to represent uh, kharkiv as not only the city uh, suffered uh, from war, uh, which is true, obviously, but also the city uh, that has a lot of to contribute to the world and to the international community. Yeah. Thank you so much. And, and thank all of you for taking the time today to, 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 to talk. And it's, it's truly wonderful to see you a year on. Uh, and, and it's incredible the work that you keep doing. Um, so let, let's make an appointment for April next year, <laughs> at the very <laughs> least, and and um, and hopefully uh, uh, by that time it would it would be completely possible and 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 normal for me to come over and have a cup of coffee in your cafe, uh, and uh, um, and take my colleagues and my friends along uh, with it because everybody should know uh, exactly the kind of things that you've experienced and the stories that you are telling. So, so thank you again. Stay safe insofar that's possible. Uh, keep doing this amazing work. And uh, and we'll see each other again. Yeah, thank you. It was nice thank to talk to you. It was nice to meet you.